Now, how, you know what, what we didn't show you there, and we can't show that to you, is the moment where these wicked elements, you know, cut off the head of this young lady. Could be someone's mother, could be someone's sister, could be my sister or your sister. And we ask ourselves, for how long are we going to allow these evil elements take control of a segment of our country? And we have a president, we have governors, we have local government chairman, we have a police force, we have the strongest army, quote and unquote, in the continent of Africa. And some gangs of murderers could just go about on rampage, pick up anyone in this, on the street, accuse them of being SSS agents, and cut off their head. It is not acceptable in 2013 that a country as big as Nigeria would allow this to continue without any repercussion. It's so sad. But tonight, we're going to talk about black people in the UK, black lawyers in the UK, and solicitors in the UK. And I've got with me in the studio, Joe Mensah Dankwa. You're welcome to Politics with KO. Thank you. Now, Joe, I want you to explain to our viewers what you do in the UK. Well, I'm a solicitor, which is a, uh, a legal practitioner in Ghana. And I think in Nigeria, you have barristers yeah. uh, and solicitors all in the same personality, but yeah. in the UK you have solicitors operating separately from barristers, but yeah. we're all lawyers. In fact, I trained in Ghana as a barrister and solicitor, yeah. but when I came over to the UK, I specialized, I sort of branched into the solicitor profession, okay. and that's what I've been doing the last ooh, 20 years or so. Okay, before we go into um, the legal profession in the UK, you saw that short clip from Nigeria. How did you feel? Terrible. It, 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 in the first instance, you feel extremely sad for the poor girl. I think it is a girl, but the yeah. poor woman, her family. Mm. Anybody being killed uh, before their time is a sad um, thing. But when it is done in the name of a political, a political movement or a religious movement, it is all the more sad. Because not only do you feel the sadness for the lady and her family, but you feel sad for the state of man. Yeah. What, it, what is it? There is legitimate political violence in war. Yeah. And, and that is recognized. And there are rules about it. But when people take the law into their own hands and execute such violence in the name of a political cause or a religion, yeah. it is a sad indictment on the state mm. of humanity. Okay. And, and, and politicians really have to do something and about it. You, you practice law in the UK, right? What would you think would happen in this country if such is shown on BBC? Maybe it happened in Northern Ireland. How would you think the, 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 the UK government or the legal system is going to respond? Well, there's no question that there will be a very swift process of investigating finding out who is behind it, who is responsible. Not only those who are responsible for the actual deed, yeah. but those who are behind them, who uh, mastermind them, who sponsor them, or who have anything to do with it. There will be a process of investigating uh, and bringing them to justice. I have no doubt about yeah. it that that would happen if that so is... So definitely the law is going to take its full course. There is no way that anybody would commit such an act and go scot-free. It may take a long time, as happened in 1985 with a police officer in this country during yeah. some riots. It was only last year, I yeah. believe, that people were brought That's to justice. That's the Broadway Water Farm. Brought, brought, uh, brought Broadway Water Farm incident. But there's no question that there was a process of investigating mm. and seeking answers, which took a long time in coming, mm. but people didn't get away with impunity. Mm. It, now, you've been practicing law in this country. You've been a solicitor for quite, for quite a long time. What are the challenges as a black person, as an, a, a British African in the UK? What challenges did you face? Well, it, it, what challenges did I face? In, in the initial stages, which is why I said earlier that I became a solicitor, um, I learned very quickly after I came here mm. that when you're a barrister, you depend on solicitors feeding work to the chambers that you belong to. Yeah. That's the first gateway. And then you depend on the clerks who are, if you like, the managers of yeah. business in the barristers chambers yeah. in getting work. And those who had come ahead of me, those of um, 
lawyers who had come from Ghana mm -hmm. uh, soon realized that it wasn't easy making, uh, uh, getting on the road to, to having a, su a successful practice yeah. uh, because of you know, the, the barriers that there are to you actually accessing work. And what are those barriers, if I may ask? Well, um, the way it played out, in my experience, was that, and I don't mean to uh, demean anybody's uh, uh, practice, but what, yeah. what you found was people didn't, uh, f they didn't flourish in, mm -hmm. in established chambers. And so people eventually sort of um, got shunted into mm -hmm. practices which were all black mm -hmm. because they couldn't get work yeah. in the main setup. So they couldn't get work. Is it because they are black, they are African, they are not originally from the UK? Or... Th that was definitely part of the problem or maybe the, the main answer, the mm -hmm. main reason. But of course, when they set up, yeah. then they managed to sort of establish networks yeah, yeah. with other, uh, especially black solicitors, mm -hmm. so that they were able to attract some work that way. Uh, and so it was easier to um, go into practice as mm -hmm. a solicitor because the first port of call when someone has a legal problem and they need a lawyer yeah. is to go to a solicitor on the high street. Yeah. The barristers traditionally uh, operated from a, a central place in London, in central yeah. London, whereas solicitors are on the high street anywhere. Yeah. Uh, and before someone realized that there was a black person in this in shop, yeah. they are already here yeah. and you've got them as a client. Yeah. I've got, I've got, I met quite a, young, a, a number of young people, black Africans or Africans uh, in the diaspora who are, uh, who are based in the UK, who are studying law in King's College, Cambridge, London Metropolitan, and any other university. And they say to me, it's a small clique. So long as you're black or you're not white British, you can't break the barrier. It's how, how true is that? I have to acknowledge that there have been significant inroads because I personally know of younger people than me mm. who uh, broke into the more established firms of practice uh, or solicitors uh, firms uh, and also there are many young black uh, mm. lawyers at the bar um, th that is the barristers yeah. um, so we have made inroads but it, it is still the case that we do face barriers as black people not yeah. just in the law yeah. but in society at large we, this society has made great strides yeah. in breaking down many of the barriers which prevented people. Yeah. There were institutional barriers which have they've done a, a good job of breaking yeah. down. But, but I've, I've attended quite a number of cases. I, I mean, my interest is anti-corruption, is to find out uh, uh, public office holders from Africa who are still in our continent dry. And for every court cases I've attended, either from the magistrate court in this country to the uh, crown court, it's all been white judges. Yes, uh, the, the judiciary is predominantly white male. Yeah. Uh, there are more white females now uh, on the bench. Um, and there are some mm. um, minority ethnic lawyers who have become judges, There's, I think they're more Asian uh, than, than black at the higher levels yeah. of the court. In the mag and it's, I think it's the same in the magistrate's court, uh, which is the first tier of the court system here. Uh, there, there are some black um, magistrates, or yeah. we now call them district judges, but yeah. you know, the old stipendiary magistrates. So have you been, sorry to, have you been to a high court, any, I mean to a crown court, which is the equivalent of a high court in, in Africa, in, in Nigeria that I know of, have you ever stood before a black judge in this country? I have sat on a jury, and for, <laughs> funny enough, lawyers ha now have to serve the yeah. jury, but I've served in a jury where the judge was a black woman. Yeah. So and not only was she black, she was also And you've been practicing for how long? I've been practicing in this country for 20 years. So once I've in 20... I've never appeared before a black judge, no. So once in 20 years, as a lawyer, you've not Have appeared I... before a black judge? Uh, that's correct. I've never seen another black judge beside that lady. And, I've you, seen and that was as a, a juror? As a juror, yes. I've seen black yeah. district judges. Because I know that by 1948, there were black people studying law in this country. And I know for sure that uh, by 1949, uh, there were more than uh, 75 black lawyers in this country. Okay. This is 2013, that there are no black judge. 
in the Crown Court to the point where you can only, you've not seen any. I don't have an, I wouldn't sort of use my experience. Yeah. I don't have an extensive practice yeah. in the Crown Courts around the country. Okay. Um, but I've been to a few. A few, yeah. Um, and I can't say that I've seen a black man as a judge in the Crown Court. Yeah. Um, no. Because, I've seen because Asians. when I compare it to America, I mean, we look at the TV and we see what happens on TV. You see uh, Michael Jackson's case, yeah. uh, high profile cases in the US. You see yeah. black judges, ethnic minority judges. Yeah. And I mean, we, our country, the UK, is supposed to be the shining light of diversity. Yes. You know, and even though it's a small population, but if they've made such progress in, in the US, yes. what is stopping the prog progression of? black people from uh, the bar as it is to the bench? Well, I would imagine that the, there are a number of reasons. Some of them would be that the population, uh, the relative population of black people in America yeah. is higher than it is here to the mm. white or indigenous population. Mm. And then the history of black people being in this country mm. in large numbers yeah. is also shorter than it is for America. And then there's the added um, issue, the, in, the other thing, positive action, which yeah. is, um, was certainly um, practiced in America yeah. in many states. We, in this country, we, we don't have mm. positive action. Mm. Uh, so those are some of the reasons. It, it must be some of yeah. the, these okay. might be the reasons. I know for sure that the police federation in this country, black police federation, ethnic minority police, uh, policemen and women, come together to fight their cause, to talk about equal representation. Yes. And I think there's been some positive impact in terms of, um, you see, you now see um, area commanders who are black. ethnic minority, yes. black as it is. Well, what are lawyers in the barristers or solicitors in, uh, solicitors in this country who come from ethnic minority background? What are they doing to make sure that we break that barrier of it being an exclusive white male dominated um, profession? Well, I know that both the Bar Council and the Law Society uh, are concerned about this issue of lack of diversity on mm -hmm. the benches. Um, the Law Society, from time to time, yeah. in conjunction with the um, JAC, I think they're called the Judicial Appointments Commission, mm -hmm. put on um, events which are intended to encourage Young, um, not young, but um, black and minority yeah. lawyers to go forward because many people are discouraged in themselves. No one tells them don't go, yeah. but people are discouraged in themselves from, from going forward because of the perceived attitudes which okay. will come against them. Yeah. Okay, I'll, uh, we're going to open the phone lines now. Uh, if you've been before a black judge in the United Kingdom and you think there, is, uh, there are enough opportunities for black people, uh, solicitors, to rise and become models to our children, you can call in. The phone lines will be on your screen. Um, now, you're from Ghana originally. Yes. Yeah. And um, do you visit Ghana regularly? Oh, yes, regularly. Um, I go, oh, I think it's turning out to be once every two years. Okay. Uh, the reason I'm not sort of going down every year is because mm. I have a substantial section of my family here. Mm, yeah. um, in fact, my mother, who lived here for a long time and, and has retired back, okay. comes from. Have you ever heard of the term Ghana must go? <laughs> yes. Okay. Are we going to have a revenge Nigeria must go action well, in Ghana? I hope not. But you see, Ghana must go from Nigeria was not the first mm. occurrence. I remember as a student, a pupil yeah. in secondary school in 1969, 70, yeah. um, when Ghana ordered all foreigners to leave, to leave yeah. the country. So it, it's been a vicious, circle. a vicious yeah. circle between Ghana and Nigeria. And Nigeria. First, we sent Nigerians out, and second, Nigerians sent Ghanaians out. Mm. And now I understand that there's quite a good size yeah. of Nigerians. Mm. Uh, size population of Nigerians and in Ghana. Of course, with the with ECOWAS now in yes. place, uh, free, in movement free movement. Yes. And, uh, it's it's quite good that we have people like you that will be like an example to our young kids now because the the picture you get on the mainstream media is about black people stabbing each other, 
black people killing one another, black people not doing yes. well. Yes. Uh, we are supposed to be the not so good people in the country. But yes. of course, we have people in your profession. Well, don't look at me. We've got senior lawyers. Yeah. You know, I, I, I did a case recently. It ran for three months. Yeah. And of the, uh, there were 16 hmm. lawyers. Um, QC, eight Q, nine QCs yeah. and, and others, you know, I, had, I was led by a black QC, yeah. you know, a very able Nigerian lawyer, mm. and I'm happy to say we and won QC, our case. QC, for the benefit of our viewers in Africa, QC... Is well, a... QC means, means Queen's Counsel. It's a senior mm. lawyer. Uh, it, previously, it was senior barristers who uh, were, were kind of selected to become... Queen's Council. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. even solicitors uh, can mm -hmm. qualify, and you do have to sit an exam. It's mm -hmm. a very rigorous process. Mm -hmm. Now, so, of, co of course, we have we have an example of good people, you know, uh, barristers, solicitors from uh, ethnic minority background. But how about those bad eggs who take advantage of Africans in need of immigration advice yes. who are not qualified but pretend to be yes. solicitors and yes. they just milk the the, the people. Yes, that, that is always very sad. Um, it is, there's another um, band of people who parasite on our people that yeah. are, maybe we'll leave to one side. Yeah. But it is very sad when um, we see people who often may have uh, a level of qualification mm -hmm. in law, yeah. but they certainly aren't lawyers. lawyers yeah. they, may have not, they may not have completed their studies, yeah. but because when they come over, yeah. they go through the process, the immigration process themselves, yeah. they submit their own applications, and they become as familiar with the process, yeah. and that qualifies them as experts, mm. uh, and from that they charge people. Mm. And the sad thing is that often they give people false hopes, mm. um, uh, you know, on the pretext of doing something, eventually they yeah. charge people at various stages, taking yeah. money from them. Yeah. And immigration problem is one of those situations w which causes people to feel desperate, yeah. and they will pay anything. They th when people think mm. that money will buy yeah. them what they're after, so the milk, they the milk will the pay. Yes. Okay, I'll let you go. I've got Kenny. Kenny G. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Do we still have Kenny on the line? Uh, good evening. Okay, I think we might have lost uh, Kenny there. And it's actually quite interesting listening to you. And um, if I am a Nigerian or I'm from Ghana, I just arrived this country today. I am a solicitor in Africa and I've got a right to stay in this country. What process do I need to take to become a registered, recognized solicitor in the UK? Well, first of all, you have to make a decision as to whether you want to become a solicitor or a barrister. Yeah. Um, if you want to become, and I'm not too familiar with the route to become a barrister, barrister yeah. but if you want to become a solicitor, this it was different for me, but the current situation is you have to apply to the uh, Solicitor's Regulation Authority, yeah. and I think the route is called uh, Foreign Lawyers Registration okay. Process, FLR. And so you, you inquire of the SRA and uh, complete forms. Mm. And I think as long as you've got um, certain, you meet certain criteria, criteria you yeah. probably don't even need to take another exam mm. um, here mm. before, which I always find is unhelpful because I think that um, it is the reason why yeah. um, so many of our people get don't into see, trouble. Yeah with the regulatory bodies yeah, because yeah. if you haven't acquired the culture mm. of how things are done here yeah. you soon begin to kick against okay. boundaries yes. and step over them yeah. and next thing you and know that is go probably going to just affect, stop you from yes. going okay um we've got someone on the line good evening hello good evening you're welcome to ben tv what's your name please and where are you calling from uh, my name is edwin Okay, Edwin, uh, make your contribution, please. I'm caught calling from Manchester. All right, great. Uh, what do you have for us this evening? Hello, Edwin? Yes. Uh, go ahead, please. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to make a, a comment. Okay. Uh, especially with, with uh, we who are black parents. Because hmm. we who are black parents send our children to university to do law. Yeah. And when they're qualified, they don't
don't have any place at all. Mm. They, don't, they, they don't have placement or whatever you call it. Okay. For them to be qualified uh, solicitors. Solicitors, yeah. And so many of them are then left without job or without something, and mm -hmm. they go into different other fields. Yeah. And this is one of the problems in this country, mm. particularly for our uh, young, young ones. Mm. So you spend, qualified as Edwin, Edwin, so you spend so much money sending a black child or an ethnic minority child to the university, probably to one of the best universities, yes. and he ends up uh, working in Tesco. I'm not saying Tesco is a bad place to work. So he's got a point. Well, he, yeah, um, Edwin from Manchester has got a point. Yeah. But it's not just the law that is seeing that situation where people come out as graduates and, yeah. and the, you know, the current economic climate makes th that problem worse. worse yeah. But it is true that um, because of uh, one fact which should, I should, I suppose, predicate this with yeah. is this. Uh, the legal aid system that we have had in this country for mm -hmm. many years um, has been a boon to law, uh, black and ethnic minority Minorities, lawyers. Yeah. Not a boon in terms of a trough that we've all sort of yeah. uh, dipped our noses into, but it provide, because it provides a means of mm -hmm. access yeah. to justice for yeah. the poorest in society, yeah. um, it is a, a field, an area of practice where we're able to thrive because we tend to attract the poorer people. Yeah. If I set up tomorrow as a, I don't know, private client mm -hmm. firm yeah. seeking to charge thousands of pounds in order to prepare expensive and complicated trusts for people. I won't see a black okay. face. I won't see any black person. So you probably but the, the areas of practice where our people can immigration, immigration criminal, criminal uh, social welfare, social welfare housing, housing, employment, yeah. even employment doesn't attract okay. legal aid. Okay, I'll, I'll take, uh, good evening. Hello, good evening. Uh, that's Hello. Deji. Deji, good evening. Where are you calling from, please? Hello, good evening. Hello. Uh, good evening. Where are you calling from and where, what's your name, please? My name is Deji. Okay, Deji, go ahead and make your contribution. Uh, yeah, I'm calling from Sedentary anyway. I just want to add a, a little opinion, my personal opinion. I don't think he has to go with color. Okay. Uh, and uh, well, the kind of economic situation we are in in England right now, it doesn't really work with color. And but, uh, quite a while, I could understand where the gentleman in the studio is coming from as well. Yeah. Uh, it, maybe it's our time we also, as our little community, understand what we need to study, study while we're here, that we end up empowering us more, rather okay. than just keep following what they've given us. Okay. So, Deji, 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 let me ask you this question. Deji, if it's got nothing to do with color and you say it's because of the economic boom, what happened when, uh, economic doom, I should say, what happened when we had fantastic economy and things were running well? What happened during that period? The commission we're discussing here was designed by the same people we're following, and it's their idea we follow it. Hmm. Okay, so I think, I th yes, I think what they just t saying uh, is right, but yeah. traditionally, you know, certainly from my background in Ghana, yeah. y young bright students yeah. would aspire to, there were only really two professions, medicine yeah. and law, law yeah. uh, and engineering. Every yeah. parent wants their child to go and to, you know, to aspire to the professions, mm -hmm. and that meant engineering, law, no, medicine, mm -hmm. you know, so we've, we've maintain that sort that of way of thinking, that tradition. And it is right that we don't have to, we shouldn't confine ourselves in that way. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, the school system, the careers advice system, yeah. you know, opens many opportunities yeah. in front of our young people. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, because of the background, we go into these areas. And the point that I was making earlier was that the legal aid system yeah. enabled many of us mm -hmm. to when we couldn't get employment in larger, more established firms, well, we yeah. were able to set our own practices up and have thri thri we had thriving businesses. Mm. And you will find that the black and minority firms yeah. tend to be the ones which offer opportunities mm. to black, black students, students and yeah. black trainees yeah. to, to come, come through. Yeah. So yeah. anything that attacks the, the survival, yeah. the uh, vitality of black firms, yeah. 
uh, puts impediments in the way of young yeah, people. Yeah, and that is what we, I mean, f in 2005, eight years ago, mm -hmm. in the country, we had three th over 3,000, nearly 4,000 firms of solicitors offering criminal legal aid. Yeah. As we sit here, there's 1,600. Various government measures yeah. have squeezed out okay. a number of So firms. if I get you right now, because of the court in the legal aid system, it affects the black and ethnic minority lawyers? More. more. But the, before, before then, I've got Adebayo on the line. Good evening, Adebayo. Yeah, uh, good evening. Uh, Adebayo, where are you calling from, please? Calling from London. Okay. Uh, make your contribution. Yeah, uh, I, I just want to find out one or two things. What is the difference between a barrister and a solicitor? That is one. Okay. Secondly, why is it that there's always this rivalry between Ghanaians and Nigeria <laughs> okay. all across the globe? Okay. Why? That is secondly. Thirdly, at the moment, yeah. for instance, uh, I have glue. There's a law in Ghana that allow anybody, if you want to set up a business, mm -hmm. and you are in Nigeria, that you must have a certain amount based in dollars mm -hmm. as your paid off capital before you can set up a business, mm -hmm. and that you must employ at least 10 Ghanaians yeah. before you can actually set up. Even when your when your the number of staff you are expected to take is about five, mm. that you must employ at least ten Ghanaians. Okay. And why is it that in Ghana, if you are in Nigeria and you need to go to Ghana hospital, you pay in dollars? Okay. Thank you. God bless you. Okay. Thank you very much. Before Abe, I know you're on the line, but I would let because um, we've got three to four questions now. Yeah. Before I come back to Abe, who is on the line, I'll let you. Uh, answer All right, question. just quickly, in terms of the difference between barristers and, and solicitors, um, barristers are the ones who traditionally wear a wig and a gown, mm -hmm. and, pre and they present cases usually in the Crown Court and the Higher Court. And solicitors are the people that, the first person that someone has a legal problem, they want to see a lawyer, they go to. Yeah. It's just a tradition that has developed in this country. In, this country, in the Commonwealth, yeah. in Ghana, is the same person yeah. who performs the, the functions of a solicitor, writing letters, yeah. instituting legal, legal proceedings, proceedings yeah. but the actual person who stands up to speak is a barrister, barrister. here, but in Ghana or Nigeria, is okay. the same person who will go and speak. And Rivalry question. between Ghana, I think, you, you're probably taking it too serious, is it's the same situation between the British and the French. And the French They're yeah. always knocking at, or even at each the, other. Even the, uh, England English and, and Scotland and, Scotland, and, and yeah. Scottish. Yeah. So it's a, it's a friendly rivalry. I think it, it stems from the fact that Ghana fancied itself as a model colony yeah. of the British, but obviously Nigeria was a larger and richer yeah. colony. You know, so we sort of yeah. uh, uh, needle each other in that way. Yeah. In terms of um, the minimum capital value and various investment criteria, I mean, that you would find in any country, in any country yeah. um, that, you know, if you want to come and establish here in this country, yeah. if you want to come, if you want to get a visa to come here as a yeah. businessman, yeah. you have to have a minimum uh, capital, capital of, I think it was 250,000. So it's just 000. the Ghanaian government uh, being responsible in taking care of its citizens, which is the yeah, primary so responsibility of right. any government anyway. Yes. If our government could borrow that from Ghana and uh, impose stringent conditions on uh, all these telecommunication firms springing up and exploiting our people. Anyway, that's fine. I imagine, I imagine there are yeah, various well, investment criteria. Stringent. No, what they just do in Nigeria is the, the, the companies just give the ministers some change. And <laughs> you, I know them, you know, you wouldn't know them. Anyway, I've got Abe on the line. Abe, good evening. Uh, good evening. Yeah, you're welcome to Politics with KO. Uh, please uh, join us in this conversation. Yeah, yeah. good evening. Good, good evening, evening go ahead, please. Yeah, good evening, sir. I'm calling from Acme. Okay. Okay. Um, I just want to contribute from someone. I just want to contribute. Yes. Yes, go ahead. Someone said that anything doesn't have anything to do with black color. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I can hear you. We can hear you. And I and I know that it has something to do because in this country yeah. there is nothing. Yeah, because yeah, because in this country mm. 
Because in this country, there is nothing black people will do okay. to be satisfied. Okay. Okay. There's nothing black people will do in this country that will satisfy. Okay. And the black people, they are the ones that are really working hard in this country, okay. making a payment and making a contribution to the country to be more green. Okay. Okay. And there is nothing you will do with the front of these white people that will make you to break the barrier. Okay. So I just want to tell you that there is, there is, there is, there is a guideline between the white people um, and the black people. Okay, uh, 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 we, because we've got to go for a break now, uh, I, I got your point, and um, of course, I think we've broken the... We are on Ben TV, a black entertainment network station. That's one of the breakthroughs, yes. isn't it, right I mean, now? Uh, yes. Uh, your final words before we go on break and uh, go on the second segment of this program. First, I really need to thank you for coming on this show, and I hope we're going to have you again. What okay. would be your final words to our people back home? Well, I mean, as the discussion seems to have sort of hovered around the question of whether there um, are barriers to opportunities in this country for young black people, I'd say that we shouldn't lose hope. We shouldn't be too pessimistic mm -hmm. because we've made very significant inroads, okay. um, you know, the, from uh, the time of um, Diane Abbott, um, yeah. Um, Lord Boateng yeah. and um, Bernie Grant, you Bernie know, when Grant, the, yeah, the first yeah, few black yeah. people who entered parliament, parliament now yeah. there, there's quite a yeah. number. Yeah. Now we them. actually have about uh, three and, from Nigerian heritage. And, and a number in the Conservative Party, Party as well. Yeah. You wouldn't Which have thought is, yeah. so. So we've yeah. made significant okay. inroads. We shouldn't well, beat ourselves. Thank you, uh, Joe Mensa Dankwa. Uh, it's good to have you on Politics with KO. We're going to let him go now. He's a busy man, but don't go away because we're coming back. The second segment is going to be hot and we really want to discuss this issue that is happening in Nigeria. We'll be back shortly. Stay with Ben Television. Ben Television is the first channel to introduce interactive programs within the ethnic and multicultural channels in the United Kingdom. Television's coverage ranges all over Great Britain and Ireland, reaching more than 7 million homes on the popular Sky satellite platform. The channel also reaches out to Western Europe and Northern Africa, collectively reaching more than 30 million satellite accessible homes. Ben, for advertisement, sponsorship, or programming opportunities, please call 0208-8088-800. Hi, my name is Alistair Shiode, founder and chief executive officer of Ben Television, the popular and the first ethnic television in Europe. And of course, we bring programs from Africa. We showcase everything that is beautiful about the African continent, about African people in diaspora. Stay tuned and enjoy this little promo. Television, ben Television is the UK's first multicultural, family-safe channel. Ben shows a mixture of information and entertainment television. My name is Elders in I play for the Super Eagle of Nigeria and the Sporting Club the Braga in Portugal. Keep watching Ben TV. Since its launch in 2003, Ben Television has steadily won the hearts and minds of the viewing public. Our fresh mix of cultural entertainment and information programming has filled a void in the television industry at a rapidly growing pace. A live phone in program with Garvey Ogodamu This is Ben Television live from London. People of the world, mm -hmm. and that's one good thing we want. Yeah. And I hope they can get Jela Foundation to be involved. Well, I, I, I just hope that um, I tell you something, Don. From I was a child, I've been hearing about um, bad things happening in Haiti. Our programs are entertaining. Minister <laughs> Boy Lloyd Banks, let's ask to the Z exhibit. It's the kid 57. Keep watching the big man. My name is Daya Dene, but my friends and fans do call me D1. I keep it locked because I watch Ben Television. Our programs are information-filled. The only people that will change Africa ultimately are Africans. I think it's, uh, it signifies uh, how important uh, Nigeria is becoming uh, in the global economy. Uh, we have a very strong relationship uh, between the United States and Nigeria. 
and safe for family viewing. Well, uh, let's say for once, I totally miscalculated. And before I knew it, they were both coming down on themselves like a surging volcano, man, left, right, boom, boom, boom. We show cultural programs for all the UK's many different ethnicities. <laughs> All show long, we've been talking about the high incidence of mental health issues among Caribbean nationals in the United Kingdom. We ask the question, is the best remedy for those Caribbean nationals coming back to the Caribbean? We are back and we are discussing the African film industry as my favorite topic because, you know, what? I'm a huge supporter of the African film industry. And I want we have a limited time. Let's do this. Two weeks from now. Let's do this. Two weeks from now. I haven't changed my name and rules on the day I do, you'll be the first to know. There is so much cry in other venues, but then again, we can't go back to it because of our time. It's time for Bed News. We're bringing you the latest news from right across the globe. We're bringing you the latest news from the UK and Africa. We feature local events as well as programs from around the world. Popular imports include Video Alley and Tinseltown. Ben Television is the first channel to introduce interactive programs within the ethnic and multicultural channels in the United Kingdom. Television's coverage ranges all over Great Britain and Ireland, reaching more than 7 million homes on the popular Sky satellite platform. The channel also reaches out to Western Europe and Northern Africa, collectively reaching more than 30 million satellite accessible homes. So now welcome back to Ben Television. My name is Nakayo De Ogunda Misi. No, no, no worry. This show is still a show about uh, politics. But you know, I know say politics itself gets uh, our own tradition and culture. Yes. And all this time, when they talk to you, both people just come Africa, just carry our things, come out. You know, carry our beads, our obas. In fact, they even carry Jaja for Kobo. <coughs> Grab the man, bang, come drop for here. So today now, what's in our country, we say I get to people from a do state. I want me to tell me about it, because I don't have a big, big kingdom. Before, when, in fact, when these Oyimbo people come to Africa, eh, I do people are the only people for Africa where we say, they say, lie, lie, we're not going to take our land. And then be resist, what in be resist, say, for broken? Then be fight, um, they refuse. then be quarter with Oyimbo people, and then hold brand, brand for ground. So now then be the last uh, kingdom will fall for Africa to Imbo people. So today, what I come to say today, now broken, we we'll go do this segment. I, I get with me for studio for Ben Television, now London, we day, yeah. I get Richard Okomina and Princess Omori. Una welcome to Ben TV. Thank you Thank very you. much. And Una welcome to London. Thank you. you. Nepa don't carry license on our call? No. no way. Ah, okay. No way. Because we, yeah, Nepa know they carry license. No. This light has on our sound like those. Now, bam, yeah, that one, 24 7. Yeah. So, Madam Momori, tell me about Edo people. Where they come from? Who they be? And mm -hmm. tell me about the other. See me here. Talk to me. Uh, Edo people, we come, if, if we won't follow, and we hear from Yoruba land. Okay. Before we come, come uh, Edo. Edo. Now, uh, Edo people, when we na, na great kingdom, okay, na big place where be say people would like to to belong to. Mm. Edo people, now people where be say they get good culture, everything mm. they on ground, good oba, good leaders, mm. chiefs. Now we we'll get. <laughs> now, when you don't talk about oba, you sabi the names of some of the obas where you don't they before. I don't say Edo people now from Ife. Bam to where with the co president of those states uh, and now one of the children of uh, Odudua. But you, you remember some of the others. 
Vura me up to our Bakenzwa, the one now we will get now, mm. where they on board now, now be a ready hour. Ready hour. Okay, yes. um, Richard, what thing be say, Edo, Edo, no, they speak Yoruba, they different, one kind of be. Yeah. How mm. many different languages been there, Edo, sir? Uh, if you want to look, Edo comprises, uh, uh, if you talk of Edo, we mm. have uh, Ishan people there. Mm -hmm. We have Owa. Owa. We have uh, Ishan people there. Mm. We will still have uh, Urubo amongst mm. us, oh, okay. but it's just named Edo. Mm. These people, they are inside Edo, Edo state, Edo, okay. so we don't speak the same uh, language. So language. we get different people, get different language. Yes. Because me, for our own part of Yoruba land, we get <coughs> bar, we get... Uh, yes, that is, a, that is exactly get, how it is. Yes. Now, the thing I want to talk now, now it gets some rich... You know when you go British Museum, when I, ne when I never go British yeah, Museum. We just they come. If you land British Museum today, mm -hmm. the kind big big uh, do uh, uh, mask where they there where these people carry from Africa, chief come put for their museum, then they charge one pound, two pound, they make money out of things where we say our great great grandfather then carve them put on the ground. You know, why would I feel said? Things like that, all these big, big uh, ornaments. Now they can't keep them for British uh, museum. They collect money from uh, how you as person where come from a donor. How the thing they feel for your body? It depends, no. It depends because now I sweat. Now we take the one. Uh, those people now bless people. Mm. People where God just bless with talent. Mm. And for for uh, those we, they they do carving. Mm. They, they do bead. Mm. They, they, they 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 do molding. Mm. Different things. Now they, they do. So for a donor, when the instead we go use and enrich our place, we do and say beautify our place. Mm. But these people or Igbo people come now, they carry come off our place, mm. they come put them for their place. Mm. And be that the five five big big things where they carry since that time, mm. where they carry come this side. They come they use and say they uh, make money for mm. this side. And for Bini, we need that back. Mm. Because if we get that kind one of for Bini now, mm. our children will never see mm. that kind uh, team team uh, before. thing before. When they go see and they'll say, yes, so, so our forefathers we carve this canty. Mm -hmm. If our forefathers we carve this canty, then it means that we say we feel learn how to carve this mm -hmm. canty. Mm -hmm. Because now the leg where our forefathers move for ground. Mm -hmm. Now our children go still follow. follow. Okay. So we need our things back. Yeah. But Richard, one of the things where Oimbo people they talk, they say all these things, all these Obonge mm -hmm. masks where we get, the reason why they keep on here, they say, then carry and go ahead now. Maybe one person go just uh, chief farm. Go sell them, make private money from them. Say, Una no fit all this thing tight. Una go destroy them now. Then you even look on our road, say, say, all this road where they jaga jaga. If to say we leave these uh, big, big things with Una, that's all the thing will just disappear, the thing will spoil. You believe that, that one? That is a pure lie. Mm. We, the, the time all these things happen, we still do small. Mm. Most of these things you are asking us now, we still do small. We have many obas as we were saying just now. Uh, um, we want to use this medium to plead to our big, big people mm. when they are brought this side. Mm. So the, we have already been civilized. The civilization don't yeah. come now. Mm. We need our things back mm. because these things were produced by Edo people. Mm. The mass you are talking about, the, the carving, the, there is something we call Elm. Mm. There is something we call it is gold, the Bini gold. Yeah. The, when you get to a place like Igun in Bini City, you see the whole street right and left. That the is what they produce there. Mm. The Oribo people can't they can't do that. The Oribo people don't know how to do it. Mm. It's only in Edo mm. that you do that thing. So this time around, those things that they took from us, they forcefully take those things away from mm. us. Carry our oba mm. to, mm. to 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 make sure they carry all those things from our mm. our palace. We are begging our people that is over here. We do everything possible, if it is by dialogue or one way or the other, them, to yeah. bring to we bring our things back, back to, to us. We need okay. it. Before you you continue, we get phone call. Good evening, no. This is Ben Television from uh, London. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Yeah, sorry, I just want to contribute to what you are saying, please. Yeah, please, uh, you're welcome. Yes, please, about the part they are talking about. Uh, who gave them, who gave the British all those things? Mm. Can you explain it to us, please? 
Who gave them? Okay. Is this those poor fathers that gave them, they gave all these British, all these brows, or how come they have it? Yes, it, is, it, it was a coup. It was a coup. Mm. They came and they, they planned a coup against our Oba of Benin, mm. as at that time. They have already spied. Yeah. They have already spied and see those things that those yeah. things will be useful to them. They forcefully take those things away mm. from us, from yeah. our palace, taking our yeah. Oba along to yeah. our Oba of Rame to Kalaba. Then, so we were not okay. the one who gave who gave the did, did you get that explanation? Okay, I've got Mama. Is it uh, Mama? Good evening. Mama, I'm talking. Okay, good evening. You're welcome to Ben TV. Hotel Oguleye. Okay, good, e good evening. Just go ahead. Okay, hello. Hello, good evening. Uh -huh. Good evening. Am I to talk all the time? Are yes, you talk, anything? talk, please. You're you're on TV. Okay, hello. This is Mama Rachel Oguleye. Okay, go, to, go ahead, please. Uh, I want to say something. Please listen to me. Okay. You are all young people. Okay. Okay, I'm seventy nine old woman. Okay. A teacher for 13 years and head of school for one year. Okay. We cannot be angry with these people. Okay. They said it before. The British people said it before. Okay. Now you're bothering me. What if we didn't keep this thing for you? Hmm. Would you have come back and said this? Okay. So we have to be, we have to be prudent okay. about this. Let's tell our elders hmm. to go and see these people have a chat with them, they will give it to us back. Okay. They will, okay. I'm sure. Mama, th Mama thank, you for, thank you for coming on this program. And it's, it's a pleasure to have a sober 70-year-old person yeah, passionate about our country. Yes. And we appreciate it. Now, when I, when I say when I want to do a dual festival for UK, yeah. make you tell us about this festival. When I want to promote a dual culture. Yes, now to showcase a dual culture. Mm. Make people know, say, a dual people, the people like a dual mm. day. Okay. Yeah. So we, our culture, we will, uh, the way where we take the dance, the mm. way where we take the dress, mm. our beard, the way we the wear, mm. we, that's, now that day, now we go showcase. So which day on they do this thing? On the second, mm. which is on Saturday here. Okay. Una go play a day after music. Tomorrow, we will play a do music. Mm. Celebrate a do day. Okay. And then we will still give a uh, award to people, mm. important personalities mm. from a do. Okay. Because me, one of the things that they do for this program, they say I they encourage people in Bo promote our different okay. languages. Now, so. now because we don't get too much time. I don't say two tickets day here where we na dash viewers where they watch politics <laughs> to with KO. I thank you for coming to this program eh, and much. to London. Uh, viewers, that's the end of today's program. It's been an interesting one. We just switched over to Broken English. And um, next Thursday is going to be 10 p.m. We're going to talk about racism in Israel and what is happening to black people in the state of Israel. This is Ben Television live from the UK. Good night and God bless. Television is the UK's first multicultural, family-safe channel. Ben shows a mixture of information and entertainment television. My name is Elder Sinechejila. I play for the Super Eagle of Nigeria and the Sporting Club the Braga in Portugal. Keep watching Ben TV. Since its launch in 2003, Ben Television has steadily won the hearts and minds of the viewing public. Our fresh mix of cultural entertainment and information programming has filled a void in the television industry at a rapidly growing pace. A life winning program with Cardio Gudamusi. This is Ben Television live from London. People of the world, mm -hmm. and that's one good thing we want. Yeah. And I hope they can get Jailer Foundation to be involved. Well, I, I, I just hope that um, I tell you something, Don. From I was a child, I've been hearing about um, bad things happening in Haiti. Our programs are entertaining. Minister Boy Lloyd Banks, that's A to the Z exhibit. It's the K57. Keep watching the big man. My name is Daya Dene, but my friends and fans do call me D1. I keep it locked because I watch Ben Television. Our programs are information-filled. The only people that will change Africa ultimately are Africans. I think it's, uh, it signifies uh, how important uh, Nigeria is becoming uh, in the global economy. Uh, 
we have a very strong relationship uh, between the United States and Nigeria. And safe for family viewing. Well, uh, let's say for once, I totally miscalculated. And before I knew it, they were both coming down on themselves like a surging volcano, man, left, right, boom, boom, boom. We show cultural programs for all UK's many different ethnicities. <laughs> When you're looking for a solicitor to deal with your case, you don't just look for any solicitor, you look for the rights.